Welcome to United Prayer International, the home of the Upper Room. We're excited to bring to you a powerful program here today that it promises to, to, to change your life and change, it change your direction and possibly give you a brand new beginning. Everybody needs a new beginning one, you know, once in a while. You know, we go straight and sometimes we say, God, give me a brand new beginning. Give me a new start. Give me a fresh start. And I think that you can, you can accomplish that, you know, by the title that we have today. The blessings of a broken and contrite heart. It's a new beginning with God. Mm -hmm. The blessings of a broken and contrary heart is a new beginning with God. This is the title, you know, and this is the topic that we're going to be talking about. And so in order for us to have a successful program today, you know, we have none other than a couple of guests that we have here in the house. And that's none other than Eli Barajas, my own son. Amen. And welcome, Eli. Praise the Lord. Thank you for having me. It's a Praise pleasure to be back here with you. Amen. And then we have Jesus. Amen. Um, Amen, Pastor. Your, 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 your last name is? Juarez. Juarez. Yes, Praise sir. the Lord. Like Benito Juarez. <laughs> yes, Amen. sir. Jesus Juarez. And um, Eli has been saved for about six years. Uh, he's, he's, gone, uh, two, he's gone to the home, Victory Home, for two years. Not one year, guys. Two years. Amen. And now in his honor, in the honor of all the treasures I'm wearing, you know, the, the victory. I went victory homes today. He's a supporter. That's I'm support. Right. I'm a proponent, amen, of the victory homes, the treasures. And uh, he's, he's actually traveled different parts of the world. He's been you know, able to be used by God in different places. And now he helps uh, the court team here at the international offices in regards to the victory homes. And I I want to thank you so much, uh, Eli, for being here. And it's also a regional pastor uh, all of our area in Obviously. regards to the Victory Homes. Amen. So thank you for being here. He's married to Sylvia. And he has two wonderful children. Amen. And he was a national world champion in Hambo. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Give him a good hand. Amen. And he loves the Lord. And he loves prayer. And then Jesus uh, has been saved for... I've been saved for about five years. Five years already. Uh, shortly after his salvation, he went to Cape Town, yes, at UTC in Cape Town. And it was a powerful instrument of God to bring the joy of God to those people in Cape Town. Because he was the best dancer. <laughs> I mean, he makes some moves, you know, <laughs> that... I said, my, is that my spiritual son? Yes, it was. You know? <laughs> That's right. And, uh, and so he was there serving uh, for one year. Yes, sir. Right? And then he came back. And then now he is the leader of the media. Uh, you, you're taking over the media. Yes, sir. Ministry of our church. He's a powerful preacher. Both of them are good preachers. Amen. And, um, you know, he's very smart. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I, I want to I wanna thank you, both of you guys, for being here. Amen. That you're still fresh. Yes, sir. You know, so we're talk about a new beginning with God. Amen. Amen. That starts with a broken and contrite heart. But we're going to learn from the, from the life of David. The life of David gives us a good glimpse, you know, into having a fresh start with the, with the Lord. Amen. And uh, we're going to be going to, uh, let me see here. Psalms 51, verse 17. That's going to be our text. Uh, call somebody. Tell them they're going to, listen, we're going to share some very important things that is going to help you, is going to help the people that are going to be logging in, okay, through YouTube or Facebook. Call them up, tell them to stop doing what they're doing and tune in to what God is doing here in the upper room, amen? Because we want to have a better, a better year today. Seems like 2019, uh, 2021, it was one whole entire big giant year, you know, Corona and crisis and everything. But I believe the year 2022, 2022 is a year where God is going to bless you. God's going to put a stop to a lot of nonsense of the enemy. And he is going to allow you to line up with him so that you can be a recipient of his blessings. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, okay. There's a, you know, uh, the thing, uh, our scripture, 
same scripture is Psalms 51, verse 17. The Bible says, The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. This, O oh God, you will not despise. Again, I want to say, a broken and contrite heart. This, O oh God, you will not despise. This is David. <clears throat> David wrote us this psalm after falling in, uh, in, in, in sin with adultery and also killing the husband Uriah of, of Bathsheba. I, I want to just share with you, and, and again, uh, I want to thank God for our guests here today. But uh, the reason why I felt it was necessary for, for them to be here because they, they have seen my son being able to see um, I, I been able to be graced with brokenness, and I learned that from my pastor, Pastor Sonny, our founder, and that he learned it from, you know, from Nikki Cruz. And we all, you know, everybody models something, you know, but they're, they're, they're here, they, they, they know that I cannot pray without being broken. That's right. I always need the clinics, <laughs> amen? And so, but let me ask you, Eli, uh, what is this, you know, sounds me to, what is the scripture? A broken and contrary heart, this, oh God, you will not despise. W what do you take out of, or what do you get out of this, out of this scripture? Uh, when I read the scripture, <clears throat> it, it uh, I think it just, it, it <clears throat> inspires me to be open with God, mm. you know, to, to just let him know that, man, I don't have everything all together. Uh, I'm messed up. And uh, just to be broken in his presence, mm. that's, that, that draws his attention. Mm. You know, the, the Bible says that we're surrounded by a, a cloud of witnesses. Yes. And, and for me, I, when I'm in prayer and I'm broken, <clears throat> I just could picture God just looking down on me. And it's pure. Yes. And, you know, it's a pure brokenness. I'm not, mm. you know, when it's, when it's my prayer time, it's, it's mine and his time. Yes. And yes. Uh, the brokenness. He sees uh, the desperation of what I need. Mm, you know, that's so, good. so it grabs his attention. Yes. You know, so that's what I take when I read this this scripture, is that <clears throat> I need him to move. Yes. You know, so, um, and just a, a brokenness, just to be alive, that he's granted me another mm. day of, of life. That's right. That it's his breath in my lungs, mm. hey. and I return that back to him with Come my on. praise and his and my worship. Mm. You know, and uh, that that just that that always gets me to a point of brokenness. You know that I don't deserve to be here. Mm. I rejected him. I ran away from him. Mm. Uh, I was embarrassed of him. I was ashamed of him. Mm. But there he was, wide open, wow. with his arms wide open, ready to receive me. Yeah. That's heavy. That's heavy. Jesus, what do you get out of this scripture? I think something that I get, and honestly, David David's one of my favorite Bible characters of all time. Mm. Like he is somebody that I consistently uh, try to model myself after, uh -huh. not because he was such a perfect man, because he was such a broken man. Uh -huh. And so whenever I read it, I read somebody who was real with God, mm. a broken and contrite heart tells God that I'm not fake. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to hide things from you. I'm not trying to show you that I got it together, but it, it's, it's showing God that, that he's humble. That, he, mm. that he's allowing God to enter into a situation. And it, it always reminds me of me, not because I'm such a great guy, but because I'm such a broken guy. Mm. I'm such a broken man, and, and I have insecurities like David did, and I have those things mm. where God's just dealing with me. And, and it reminds me every time I go into prayer that, that God's not looking at my actions, but he's looking at my heart, Ooh, and he's judging on, my heart. Write it down, somebody. And, and, and that's uh -huh. what I love about God because not only do you see the realness of David, but you see the realness of God. Yes. That God's going beyond the surface of things, but he's dealing with the heart and, mm. and he's really just he, he, digging deep into it. Yes. You know, God's not a surface God. God's not a man where he's surface and he's only dealing with the outside things, mm -hmm. but God's a very intentional God. And man, I'm just broken every day knowing that 
that despite my faults and despite my insecurities, that God's able to use me. Yes. I'm grateful. I go into prayer and, and, and I'm broken. I'm crying. I'm weeping. And it's something that you've modeled yeah. yourself. Yeah. You know, you go into your, you know, if we're praying at the church, you go to the drummer cage and you're right there broken. Yes. And it's something that I've taken to heart because uh, because I'm, I'm not perfect either. And I want to be real with God and tell him, God, I'm broken. Use my brokenness however mm. you can. You know, I have, here's my brokenness. God gives a new beginning. You mm -hmm. know, to people that are broken, and that, that's important, you know, for us. God makes all things new, you know, gives you a new chance, a new beginning, a fresh start. And we all need a fresh start. And this year of 2022, it is important for all of us, you know, to, to know that you can have a fresh start, especially because God is moving and accelerating things through this third way revival mm -hmm. that God is, God is doing. We can see God moving all over the world. We can see God moving through that church, base churches that uh, Pastor Sunday has been able to plan in, in South Africa and, uh, you know, in, in Holland and Guadalajara and also Panama and also uh, Third Wave LA. You know, God is, God is moving and these churches will be mega multiplying churches. That's right. But how does it happen? Because the spirit of brokenness that is upon our founder, Pastor Sonny, is coming upon this third wave revival. The old of us, third wave revival includes the first wave, the second wave, and even the third wave Amen. together. As we remain broken and not prideful, but broken, repentful, I believe that God will see a pure heart and God will give us a brand new start That's like right. the way he gave you David. Amen. So praise the Lord. So I want to let's look at the, at the life of David. Let's learn from him uh, because there are some things that we need to learn. Not to, not to know, you know, early this year, the Lord led me to do a, a if actually a 12-day fast, but on the, on the portion, the last four days of fasting um, on water, I went to the mountains and I, I asked God, I said, God, uh, you know, I took some books. I always take books. I took, I take some notebooks uh, so I can write thoughts of mine, of God. And then I ask God, okay, the, the, the first thing that I think anybody should read when we, when we fast is the Bible. Not just books, yeah. but it's the, it's the Word of God. So I said, God, what do you want me to start? Do, do I, in the book of Acts or the book of Galatians, the book of Philippians? Uh, what do you want me to start in? Genesis? You know, and so in my mind, I, I heard, you know, the word, uh, Psalms, you know, Psalms 51. But uh, I got to be honest with you. I went to the mountains to be, you know, to intercede, you know, for people that I promised I was going to pray for them. Uh, but then this deals with sin. So then later did I know that God wanted to deal with my sin. And I said, God, I, I don't, I don't, I really came up here, you know, I don't think I've been, you know, any sins. But when you fast, fasting surfaces areas in your life and you begin to, the Holy Spirit begins to show you areas where you have sinned against him. Amen. And God began to show me something, you know, that I'm going to share with you in a little bit. So in order for me to understand Psalms 51, I had to read Psalms 50. And, and when I was reading Psalms 50, it's dealing with judgment upon people that disregard his instructions, people that disregard the word of God. So God tells them, this is, you know, I read this, you know, he says, uh, it says, you, in Psalms 50, verse 20, you said, and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother, son. These things you have done, and I, and I kept silent. You out, you know, you thought that I was altogether like you, but I will reprove, I reprove you. In previous, in previous, uh, in verse 16, it says, but to the wicked, I say, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth. 
seeing that you hate instructions and you cast out my word behind you. So God is saying to the people, you know, there in Israel, what, what right do you have to claim my blessings? What right do you have to claim healing, deliverance? What right do you have to call upon me? What right do you have when you hate my instructions? You put my, my word behind, behind you. You don't want to listen to that. You just want the blessings, my blessings upon you. So I'm in the mountains. I'm in prayer mountain, and I'm looking at this. And I, I'm, 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 I'm broken because I'm thinking like, man, God's searching my heart. You know, and when I shared, you know, when, when, when David says, God, search my heart and try me and, and know my ways and see if there's any wicked way. Really what it was saying in the original uh, translation, the Hebrew translation, he was telling God, put my heart on trial. Put it on trial. That's good. So we can find every weakness in my heart. I can repent. If you show me my weakness, I will repent from that. But put my heart on trial. How many people can actually say that? Mm -hmm. That's heavy, you know? And so, you know, what got me is that God was telling me, you come up here to the mountains to ask for my blessings. But he was saying, we need to repent. We got some issues. Be right, Pastor. Can I tell you why some of my issues? <laughs> Speak it, Pastor. You guys want to know my issues? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, God... God, uh, for already for months, started to wake, wake me up at four in the morning to pray, to intercede. Sometimes just to hang out with God. So sometimes, usually at four o'clock, you know, I'm a man that sleeps all night long, <laughs> you know. I need my sleep, you know. Four o'clock, the Holy Spirit comes in and wakes me up. And there had been many times that in the name of I'm tired, in the name of I have... I have uh, issues or I have, uh, I have work to do in the morning. I, I go to sleep thinking that God understands, you know, but uh, that's a sin. To me, that's a sin because God was dealing with me because I woke you up so that you can intercede for somebody. I woke you up so you can, there's a need, there's an urgent, urgent need, and, you know, and so the conclusion of my thoughts you know, was saying that I started feeling bad because I started saying how many people committed suicide because I didn't intercede for them. How mm -hmm. many people died that could have been healed that, that, that because of my, you know, of my laziness or my apathy, I went back to sleep thinking God understands, you know, but let's, listen, we are... God says, you are my instrument of war in, in, in Jeremiah. Yeah. You are my instrument of war. You are my battle axe. With you, I'm going to destroy the parts of the enemy. But when we don't want to be used, when we are as, as, as servants of God, as warriors here you know, on earth, as ambassadors of heaven, we don't allow God to use us, want to us. So I see, I begin to repent. That's good. Because God began to tell me, man, you, you missed it. Yeah. You know, now I got to say that there's many times I get up and I do go into my little prayer room and I pray in the middle of the night, you know, hang out with God and I pray in her seat. But they have some times that I feel the Lord and, and I, I, I went back to sleep thinking that he would understand because of my, my busy schedule during the day. I had so, a similar experience uh, not yeah, too long ahead. ago. Uh -huh. um, you know, there, there, there was a, a season in my life where I really wanted God to move in a situation. So <clears throat> I was desperate, you know, so I, those, those uh, midnight prayers were coming mm -hmm. often. I couldn't sleep. So I'm like, okay, God, what do you want? You know, so uh, I would get up and I started reading. I started mm -hmm. praying two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, same situation. Wow. You know, and, uh, and then there was times that, that I was tired. And then I would just be laying there. I couldn't go to sleep. And, he, and then I would hear him say, how bad do you want it? Mm. Wow. Are you going are, are gonna, are gonna to mm. do something about it? Or mm. are you going to let the enemy snatch that away from you? Wow. Talk about it. Right? So I had to, I had to get up from that, from that bed. And, and, and whether it was five minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, had to respond. Yeah. Wow. He, he's looking for our response. Yes. You know, so that time, you know, and 
uh, just the other day, he woke me up mm. again. Mm. And he said, remember that time when you were desperate for me to move? Wow. That's good. Are you still desperate for me to move? Wow. Come on, Come somebody. On, somebody. That's so right. I was laying there, and, mm. I was, and I was like, man. <laughs> I was tired. The rebuke. You know, and then I was like, I couldn't go to sleep. 30 minutes went up, passed by, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going back to sleep right now. Wow. You know, your mind is wide open. Yeah. And I was like, all right, God. I rolled out of bed, and I just I got into some mm. prayer. Yeah. You know, but after that, then I was able to go to sleep. Yes. But he didn't allow me to go back to sleep until I responded. Yes. You know, so a lot of times we're looking for our response. Yeah. You know, our, is our response still going to be the same when we're not as desperate for him to move in our life, yes. but he's still desperate for, f to move? Yes. Mm. Right? So it's not just on our condition, but God wants to do something. Mm. Are we going to respond? Yeah. You know? You know, there's many around the world. And God used intercessors to intercede for people in, in, in different parts of the world. Sometimes it could be our siblings, our mom or dad, our, our nephews, our, our sons and daughters. Or sometimes it could be pastors or victory around the world, missionaries. God knows the need, and sometimes God wants to use us. Mm. But, man, I'm telling you that I feel the Lord in those areas, and I have to repent. Yeah. So, so now I'm going to start reading, you know, uh, Psalms, Psalms 51. And when I start looking at Psalms 51, this is, this is Psalms 51. It deals with the sin of David. You know, how he committed uh, sin with Bathsheba. And he also sent Uriah to the front of the army so that he can get killed. Now, intentionally, he did that. So he, that was a hidden sin from him. And, and God needed to deal with the sin. Now, I want to ask you, without offending, I'm not saying this in an in a offensive way, but uh, do you have a hidden sin that God, 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 wants, God, wants, to, God wants to give you a few start? I mean, a fresh start, but you, you can't bring the junk from the past mm. You can't bring it into a fresh year. Right. If, if you want a prosperous year, a Kairos year where God just moves supernaturally in your life, you, you can't bring stuff, hidden sin, into this marvelous hmm. moment where God wants to move in your life and through your life. So God, David, hit in, he, he hit the sin. So God speaks to prophet Nathan, and he says, I want you to go, uh, with David and deal with the sin, reveal that he that you know he's a sin and there, there's there's a there, there is a parable, you know basically of a traveler coming to a city, and there are two men there in the city. One of them is rich, extremely rich, and the other one extremely poor. The one extremely rich has many, a lot of animals, uh, bulls, uh, he's got lambs, all kinds of things like that. The poor has only one little lamb. So part of the culture, when somebody comes from the outside, you know, into your city, into your house, part of the culture is to, to treat them with royalty, to, 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 to feed them. You know, that's part, that was part of the culture. So the, the rich man, instead of getting one of his lamb to feed the traveler, he goes and takes the lamb of the little a little poor man. That was the only little thing that he got. And he took it, he killed it to feed the, the traveler. So when David's hearing this parable uh, that Nathan is telling him, he, he, he gets, he gets uh, you know, he's angry. And it says, who would do such a thing like that? That man, that rich person, wicked man, you know, he deserves to die. Mm. So Nathan tells him, David, you are the man. Wow. You are the man. That's it right you there. were king, and God sent people to your kingdom. And instead of you taking care of them and, 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 and protecting them, you took somebody's wife to be your wife, to have intimacy with, with that person, with that Bathsheba. Wow. Then, in turn, to hide your sin, you sent Uriah, her, her loyal captain in your army, you send him forth in the front with no guards so he can die. 
You committed both adultery and murder at mm -hmm. the same time. It says, you're the man. But you know what happened to David? The reason why God says, David is a man according to my own heart. The way God, God used David to bring the lineage of Jesus, you know, out of his loins, is because he, his, his brokenness, yeah. th there was a brokenness in prayer. Th there was, uh, he says, a broken and contrary heart you would not despise. Mm -hmm. And so look what the, God says in Psalms, Psalms 51. I'm going to take you, you know, <clears throat> to the, through the heart of David and yeah. try to understand the heart of David and try to say, God, I need that kind of heart. You know, he says in Psalms 51 verse 1, it says, have mercy up, upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to your multitude of your tender mercy. Blood up my transgressions. It says, and wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and create and, and Cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Hmm. There are certain sins, brothers and sisters, that will ever be before us. Don't think that, that the devil is tempting you to do something. Some sins will follow you wherever you go. The sin of murder, the sin of idolatry, the sin of adultery. He says, this sin is it's, it's ever before me. Mm -hmm. God forgives you, but your mind doesn't forgive you. Your conscience doesn't forgive you. The enemy will use your conscience to condemn us. Right. It says, and my sin is ever before me against you. You only have I sinned and done this evil in your, in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge me. You know, what he's saying is, says, you know, it says, I've sinned against you. I understand that. But you're so righteous. No matter what judgment you bring against me, you, you're blameless. I'm the one who sinned against you. I'm the one who's blamed. I'm the one that deserves judgment. It says, you are blameless, God. Wow. Man, you know, when you put that in perspective, when you put that in perspective, when you said, my sin crucified you to the cross. It was my sin. It wasn't the Romans. It wasn't just the Jewish people. It was my sins, That's our good. sins, that crucified That's Jesus good. to the cross. And that's the attitude of David. He says, man, I have sinned against you. Mm. And then he goes on to say, he said, and then he's with desperacy. And with a broken and contrite heart, he says, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Verse 9, hide your face from, me, from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. That's good. Verse 12, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressions your ways and sinners shall be converted. He says, man, make beauty out of ashes. Amen. And that's exactly what God's done with you, Eli. Mm. You deserve, like me, like many people, death. I mean... A lot of your own friends died, yeah. yet you remain alive. Mm -hmm. And, and when, I, when I see you praying, you break in the presence because, I mean, I know a little bit of your past, but you know your, your whole entire past. For 18 years, we didn't have a relationship because you, you, know, you went your ways. You went in, in, in the way of darkness. And... When you read this, Eli, that, that's kind of like, you know, do you feel like, man, I'm, I'm a little bit like that. 
Yeah, man, and uh, I could identify with David so much because he was a man that that constantly failed. He mm. constantly messed up. Mm. It was like uh, when, when I can imagine God up there like, oh, David, what did you do now? <laughs> what did you do now? You know, like, uh-huh. what? You killed him now, you know, and what? You know, like, he, he, God was probably uh-huh. just like, yeah. mm-hmm. but I think the way God was able to just continue to love him was David's love for God. Yes. You know, and, and the scripture, when I look at it, uh, Psalms 51, 17, the, it says a broken spirit, right? Now, now any vessel that is broken can no longer hold anything, uh-huh. right? So what, 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 the way I take it is he wants, a, he wants you to be empty. Ooh, uh-huh. that's good. Empty of your sin, yes. empty of yourself, yes. empty of everything, mm. right? Because he wants something to pour into you. Right? He wants he to fill you with your Holy Spirit. The yeah. Spirit, mm. right? But, but a broken, anything broken cannot hold anything inside. Wow. A broken cup, a broken bottle, a broken anything, a broken mm. vessel cannot hold any, any, anything inside. So he wants us to be empty mm. of, of, our, of ourselves. Wow. That's good. You know, you know um, by, by law, the sin that he committed, by law, he should have been put to death. Uh, and, and he knew that the law declared death upon him because, because, because of his sin, great sin of murder and, and adultery like that. So, but he became broken in spirit. He became broken in contrite heart. In other words, he was remorseful for his sin. He didn't treat his sin like, oh, good God, forgive me, and, and it's all over. Even in, in one of the verses, in verse 16 of Psalm 51, he says, for you do not desire sacrifice or else that we give it. You do not delight burnt, burnt offerings. In other words, you don't want a quick fix. Right. You know, you don't want something like, okay, you can get, tell me do something, I'll do it real quick, and then, you know, my failure be behind. No. A broken, a contrite heart stays with you. It should be a lifestyle. Mm. A lifestyle that you take your every sin seriously. Because mm. every one of our sins... Crucify Jesus to the cross. Right. It caused pain. Yeah. It caused agony to the God of this creation. Amen. Uh, Jesus, maybe you can look at this. You represent the third wave. You know, and uh, you've been around. You've been, you know, Cape Town. You've been UTC. And you you have seen things. You know, but. I want you to speak to the third waivers. You know, those of them that are looking for their breakthrough. Those of them that want a new beginning. And God gave David a new beginning. Yeah. Because of his broken and contrary heart. God, you know, God says, you know what? I am going to blot out your transgressions. I am going to make you cleaner than snow. You know, whiter than snow. I am going to bring the Messiah through your lineage. But there, there's, there's consequences to your sin. Yeah. Your wives are going to mess up. And, and, you know, and there's, the sword is going to be against your own house. Mm-hmm. The sin that he committed with Bathsheba was birthed in a little baby was born. Mm-hmm. And, and the baby ended up dying. That's a consequence of sin. Some people, they sin, they think there's going to be no consequences. You're a young person. Mm-hmm. People in this now day, they get tempted. Should I have another girlfriend? Should I go another run? Should I, I do another party? Should I smoke another, another little joint? Yeah. Should, you know, there, there, some people, they just live on, on the middle of the fence. And now we enter into a year that where God is going to separate the wheat from the tear. There's no middle, middle ground. You need to declare who you are. You declare, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve God. Amen. No matter what my friends do, but I'm going to serve God. Speak to our, our, our viewers, some of them, most of them are third waivers, but yes, there may be some mom or dad or brother and sister that also through your words are going to be set free. Go ahead. I think uh, one thing to keep in mind as, as, we, go, as we go throughout, uh, in order to keep that broken and contrite heart is to have transparency. 
I think one thing that we see in the life of David and in the lives of our pastors and e even our regional home directors that we see consistently is a life of transparency. That's right. Allowing God to deal with those areas and enter those areas. Mm. And I think a struggle for our generation pastor uh, now is a lack of transparency. Mm. You know, they did a test, uh, a test on not Victory Outreach, but the outside church and they interviewed youth who had left the church. And one of the biggest things that they said had, had stopped the people from consistently going to, to church was a lack of modelship and transparency. Wow. And wow. so because they didn't have that transparency and brokenness, mm. you know, and, and I love it, Pastor, and this is what, one of the biggest things I love about you, Pastor, is you model brokenness and transparency. Mm. You're not afraid to put yourself out there and say, these are my mistakes, these are my sins, and I really believe David was the same way. Because David could have been like, nah, who's Nathan to come tell me? He, doesn't he know I'm king? Wow. Who is he to come tell me my sins? Mm. But because there was the transparency mm. in his brokenness, God was able to do something more. God was able to use his brokenness. God was able to deal with him mm -hmm. where he was at. Mm. You know, and God wasn't afraid to say these are the consequences because he understood that David had the transparent hearts. He understood that David could take the rebuke. He understood that David can deal with it because David had a transparent heart and allowed God to deal with it. Wow. And in that same manner, we got to have that transparent heart. We got to be able to come to God and say, God, these, these are my mistakes. Yes. And not just these are my mistakes. Here you go. I'm going to go run away now. It's these are mistakes, God. What can you do with it? Yes. What testimony can you tell? Oftentimes we get scared because we make so much mistakes and we want to leave our calling at the, at the foot of the altar. Mm. When well, God's saying, bring your mistakes to the altar, I want to rebuild you with yes. it. Yes. So if I had one Powerful. thing to say is mm -hmm. remain broken and remain transparent. Don't be afraid to tell your leaders. Don't be afraid to tell your pastors, That's right. your home directors. Don't be afraid to tell people. Don't be afraid to tell your pastor's wife mm. if, you're, if, you're, if you're that single mother out there yes. who's not sure how to deal with these. Mm. Be transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we we want to be tough. In, in, in Hispanic culture, my culture was taught, you got to be tough. Well, the Bible's saying be transparent. Yes. Single mother, be transparent. Single father, yes. be transparent. Mm. Whether you're, you're, you're a third waiver or whatever generation you came from, be transparent. Praise That's my Lord. message. Well, we approach the end of our time together here at the upper room, and I just want you to know that even though David had a, some tremendous moral failures, God was able to blot out his transgressions based on his brokenness, his transparency. He didn't hide his sin. Immediately he went, you know, to, to, to call upon God with tears. I can imagine, mm -hmm. you know, tears, remorsefulness, right. yeah. you know, for him to say, put my heart on trial. That's man. good. I want to do that all the time. I want to say, God, put my heart on trial. I want to live a holy life. Yeah. And we need people, we need, we need this third way to rise up, you know, and, and also, you know, be holy. You know, live holy lives, be separated lives. That's good. You know, our founders and our elders, they model, you know, to live holy Stay away from scandals. Stay away from, from little moves, you know, that, that many times, you know, you know bring so many um, consequences. Mm. Amen. Stay away from sin. That's right. Stay away from the Internet. There's no, you know, Internet is good, but there's a dark, dark side in the Internet, pornography and immoral things, you know, like that. You, you, you don't need this. You don't need Stay pure. Man. Right. De tell God, deal with my sin. Help me. Blot out my sin. And God kindly will come in and give you a brand new start. Man. Amen. In this fresh year, 2022. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to say a prayer for you. And, and I want to just challenge you. Amen. Just receive and follow the models of our leaders. That's right. Our founders, our elders, our multi-regionals, our regionals, your pastor. Follow their example, stay broken, stay humble, and you'll see that, that the latter reign, the That's glory good. of the latter temple hey. is greater than the first. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The reign and the power, the miracles that are going to lay on you on this year will be greater than anything of the past. Come on, somebody, Haggai 2.9 right there. Hallelujah, Haggai 2.9. Yeah. God bless everybody. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for all moms and dads, yes, brothers and sisters. Yes, Father. Lord, I pray, Father, Lord God, for all the loved ones, in the name people of Jesus. that are near 
uh, this ministry, the international offices, people that are far off yes, uh, from different parts of the world, people that are friends of Victory Outreach, I pray supernatural intervention in their yes, lives. Lord. Jesus, yes. Father, supernatural healings, yes. breakthroughs. God, I pray, Father, for pastors that find themselves with no way out. Yes, Help them out, God, I pray. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. Be the deliverer, God. Yes, God. And God, I pray that they may claim uh, Psalms 23, verse 4, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yes, Why? Lord. Because you are with me. Thank you, Jesus. You be with people. Yes, Lord. Let them know you were them. Let them know they're not alone. Let them know that you're going to help them and you're going to see them through. In the future, uh, the lives ahead of this year, God, is will always, we claim that to be better than the past. Yes, Lord. We love you. We praise you. I pray for souls to be saved. Yes. Backsliders to come yes. home. In the name of Jesus. And I pray Lord. for growth like never Thank before. Jesus. Acceleration of growth yes, in Lord. every church. Give us, Lord God, what Corona has taken us. Yes. Give us 100% yes. what Corona has done against us. In the precious and beautiful name of Jesus. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say. Amen. 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 Don't forget, every Wednesday at 1230 the, at the upper room. Amen. It's fresh. It's insightful. Amen. And it's direction as well. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Eli, thank you so much for being here with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you guys for joining us. And remember, the year 22 is the year of your breakthrough. Hey, yes. come on, somebody. God, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. It's a privilege. I'm excited. And I know that God's going to move and he's going to outpour. And like you said, the glory of the latter house shall reign. And I'm yes. excited to see the miracles taking place in 2022. Amen. God bless everybody. We love you from the upper room. Amen. See you guys. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in today to our live broadcast. You too can also be part of giving right there where you're at, whether you're watching at home or on the go, simply by clicking on the link in the description below or through our Victory Outreach International app. Let's take a look at how easy it is to give. Generosity made simple. Text VOI to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter your amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, enter your payment details and confirm your gift. Thank you for your generosity. Now we can stay connected wherever you go. Download the Victory Outreach app and stay connected with Victory Outreach International. Get important updates and announcements. Learn more about our ministries. Stay connected with events, prayer requests, and more. Watch the latest video in our media section. Easily share content on social media within the app. Give from your phone in seconds. A convenient way to stay connected. Yeah.